Yeah, Lunatic Fringe, man, that was um, that was a big, big song for Red Rider for us. And boy, I could tell it. There's just a bunch of different stories. You know, it's funny. We, the song was uh, Eclipse. Start me up on radio and set a record at to rock radio. Sixteen straight weeks. We every week we would get the report. You know, Friday morning quarterback number one, number one, and we just thought, how long is this going to last? It was crazy, and um, it just it just kept gathering momentum and kept going. And to this day, it's, it still gets a ton of airplay, especially in the States, um, at Classic Rock Radio. And my wife, uh, Kathy, a few years ago bought me a book, 100 or 1,001 Songs You Have to Have Heard, and this is, this is in there, uh, in the States. She, she got the book in New York. And it was, um, this song was magical, it may not have, you know, sometimes you wonder whether a song is, you, whether you can't kill it with a stick. I don't know about this song because we recorded it once, the tape fell apart. Never been that depressed in my life. And I remember I was traveling out west and I was listening to it in the car um, with Kathy. And we were moving out to the west coast and, and I realized, oh man, this is falling apart, you know? This tape is falling apart. And I was hoping it was a cassette, but it turned out it was on the Masters. So we had to totally re-record the song. And uh, Peter Wolf ended up doing the keyboard stuff. So the intro on the song was Peter Wolf. We had done sort of a rough version of it, but he came in, he's this crazy Austrian keyboard player. And later we toured with um, Jefferson Airplane and Grace Slick. And so it was Jefferson Starship at the time. She said, who did that? That incredible spooky intro to that song, man. We, I just love that song. And I said, this Peter Wolf. Well, lo and behold, a year later, he produced Gray Slick and he co-wrote Built the City, built and a bunch of others. Um, but at any rate, he came and did the intro to this, and we. Um, but you know, we had to re-record the whole record in three weeks. It took us, I think, about nine months to record the record. And then the tape fell apart. We had to re-record it in three weeks. So it was almost like the first recording was rehearsal. But I remember when I demoed the song, and I demoed it with Fraser Hill, and everybody at that time, management, everybody was saying, what are these lyrics? These are, these are way too heavy for rock and roll. Why don't you just get down to writing a pop song? Just write some pop lyrics. Let's get on with it. And I thought, no, this is important to say. The song speaks out against racism, it speaks out against a number of things, and it topically is, is current today, I suppose, as it was back then in some ways. And about being vigilant about our freedom. And uh, Fraser Hill came over the talk bag, and he had a weird sense of humor, and he said, John Lennon's been shot, and I said, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I thought, here's a guy that always wore his heart on his sleeve, and I thought, for better or for worse, these lyrics are gonna stand, you know, I'm gonna, and I didn't think the song would see the light of day because it was just so different, so unique. And it did, and so, obviously, you know, in, in 16 weeks at number one on, on the US AOR chart, album rock radio chart, it was amazing. And to this day, I tell young artists, I said, when people tell you that you're doing something wrong, or you shouldn't be doing this, or you shouldn't be going in this direction. I say, maybe that's the very direction you should be going in with your music. So I'm very proud of this song. It's just, uh, it's probably one of the more unique pieces of music I've ever written. And Kenny just plays his heart out. Just the steel guitar on this is magical and it's unique. And it's like nobody's ever heard except for, uh, I guess David Gilmore has experimented with a slide guitar and done brilliant things with it in the past. And so they were a big inf influence, inspiration with us as, as a band. And it just, the song just had a life of its own, like sometimes great songs do, and Life's a Highway is another one, and uh, Boy Inside the Man to a lesser degree, I guess. It's just, in, in big league, they stand the test of time. And that's what I always wanted to do. I wanted to write songs that meant something, that still would entertain people, but had impact and, and meant something, but songs that would stand the test of time. And uh, you don't always achieve it. Um, you just, 
you just kind of put one foot ahead of the other and do your best. And I've been very, very lucky and blessed to be able to come up with some songs that have stood the test of time. And Lunatic Fringe is one of them.